Hey YouTube, it's Annabelle. So I wanted to do my daughter's 16 month update really, really quickly. Um, I am like a week late on this, but um, there's so many things that have happened since I did. Um, the last update I think I did was when she was 14 months old. And so there's been lots of stuff that's happened um, in the last couple months that I wanted to talk about. Um, one of the major things for right now is that um, she has nine teeth now and we've had a couple come like really 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 quickly and she is working on so she has her four front top and bottom and then we have one that is um, up on top on this side and there are two more that I just checked today and there are two more on the bottom that are, um, they're there. They just have to like poke through. So anyways, um, we've been having lots of like issues with her teeth. And I know I've said in like past updates and stuff that um, when she has a tooth coming in, there's like two to three days where she is just crabby and just she has a really hard time when she's got teeth coming in and right now with these uh, bottom two that are um, they're just below the surface and so who knows how long that they how long it will be before they come out because um, we've had um, teeth that have been right there and they've popped out the next day and we also have had um, a couple of her teeth that they've been under the surface for a month before they actually like came out so we don't know how soon it's gonna be but she has been a crabby patty for the last like oh I would say probably the last month um, so we've had lots of new teeth, great, exciting. Um, a lot of my friends' children um, can eat and chew a bunch of different stuff, um, but my daughter can't because she just has her gums back here with just that one tooth up on this side. So she can bite stuff, but otherwise she gums things to um, like chew them and then swallows them. Um, we still cannot... Um, feed her things that she has to chew. Um, we, we do feed her like steak and pork and things that you have that are a little bit tougher that you have to chew. Um, we just cut them up in very very like like almost like shredded um, her meat so that way her body still like can digest some of the protein and stuff from it. Um, but otherwise um, she she eats fabulous. Um, we go through like a little um, like spurt here and there where she does not like to eat and won't eat um, a whole lot. But um, she's always been a fabulous eater. Like ever since she was born, she's just been just a great eater. And right now um, we are like we, well we have been for since um, she was like 11 months old. She gets all of the food groups um, with every meal except breakfast. Um, breakfast she usually just has um, a grain and like a protein like peanut butter or um, eggs um, or and a fruit. So that is what we kind of do for breakfast but otherwise lunch and supper um, or dinner whatever you want to call it um, we hit all the food groups. Um, her favorite food groups are fruit and dairy and we have had no luck with um, whole milk, so she is still drinking the toddler formula. The, it's called like older infant um, slash toddler formula. It's for nine months to 24 months. Um, so she is still on that, and we are going to try again um, when she is 18 months old to see if we can introduce, instead of doing the formula, if we can do. Um, 1% milk because that's what we drink is 1% um, so we are going to try that out here in July um, try her on that milk and see how it goes um, another thing for drinking um, we did start her on 100% unsweetened juice and it gives her a diaper rash and we've had to um, use disposables here because we cloth diaper we've had to use disposables 
um, to clear up the diaper rash that she got from the fruit juice. And um, we do not give her full strength juice. Um, we don't even give her like 50-50 juice. Um, it was like her entire sippy was filled with water and then it was just a splash of, splash of juice and she still got a diaper rash. So it's just the juice. So I'm not real certain um, what it is that is in the juice that is giving her the diaper rash because it's not the sugar part of it because she does, she can eat whole fruits she can eat apples, bananas, blueberries, um, peaches, strawberries, all that stuff in their whole form. And she loves fruit, loves fruit. And the whole fruit does not give her the diaper rash. But as soon as we introduced um, the juice part of it, just to, um, we, we still have her get 24 ounces of the formula um, a day because that's what is recommended and what we talked to our doctor about. Um, but if she is thirsty any other time of the day, um, I was giving her water. And then just to have something different, um, I was giving her juice once a day. But then we got, well, water and then a splash, like literally a uh, of juice. So um, it gave her a diaper rash. So we had some issues with that. So we are not going to do juice anymore. Um, we are just going to stick with um, her formula, try milk, 1% milk in um, July, and we're just going to go with water, and that is all she will be drinking. And I'm kind of glad that <laughs> um, she drinks water and she likes water. Um, I know some of my friends' children, they will not touch water, like will not drink water at all. Um, so I know a few of my friends try Crystal Light because it doesn't have like sugar and all that stuff. Um, but I'm going to steer clear of juice and we're just going to do the water and formula. Okay, so, um, and the, the, I just, I just kind of said this, but she can eat any other kind of dairy except she cannot have the whole milk. As soon as she has whole milk, she gets a diaper rash. Um... So, and I talked to um, a few of my friends and family about it, and it was just that her, her body just can't tolerate it. Just like the little splash of, splash of juice, even though it is 100% juice and unsweetened, like no added sugar, nothing, um, she still gets the diaper rash from it. Um, sleeping wise, she is, she is still in her crib. Um, we are planning, we are currently trying to conceive. And as soon as that happens and or um, July hits, we are going to start her in a big kid bed. And um, it's just, it's kind of my, my theory about um, like potty training. We have a cushy seat that goes on our toilet. We do not have a potty chair. Because um, when we're out in public, they don't have potty chairs. Um, and I want her to get used to using the big toilet. Um, same thing goes for her sleeping. Um, we have a queen size bed in her bedroom um, that used to be in what is now our like changing room slash um, toy room um, that is an, on our main floor. Um, and we used to have a day bed that was in her room that we were going to originally have her sleep in. Um, but now we have that queen size bed. Um, we have a little step up into it. And one of our baby buys for, well, whichever comes first, if we get pregnant um, or July hits, whichever one comes first, um, we are going to get um, bed rails for that bed. Um, so that way um, she will be like somewhat safe in it. Obviously she can still go out um, the bottom part. And so we will be transitioning her to the big bed um, here in the next couple months. Um, and the reason why I have kind of set a time on it and like just have have said, okay, by this date we're we're doing it. It is because her mattress on her crib is on the lowest level that it can have. And she can grab on, lift yourself up, and she has had one foot over the like railing of her crib. So that scares me so much, like absolutely scares me. Um, there was one day where she, um, she threw her sippy out of her crib 
and it landed on the floor and it made a big huge boom in the baby monitor. I had a heart attack. <laughs> I ran up those stairs so fast and just I was expecting to find her on the floor and just my imagination went from there as I was like running. Um, but it was just her sippy. She just had thrown out her sippy. But she, if she wanted to, she could get out of her crib if she wanted to. So that is the part that scares me. And that is why I have kind of been like, okay, we are going to be a big girl and go big kid bed um, here in the next two, three months-ish. So I will have an update on that and how that's going when we get there. Um, let's see. Um... With her, like, learning and everything, um, we have, we just, I try to expose her to as many things as possible, and trying to, um, show her things and tell her about things, tell her what I'm doing, tell her what other people are doing, have her watching other people, um, we have started doing, um, in the last two months, we've started doing puzzles, um, the ones with the big knobs on them um those she likes the best the bigger pieces with the big knobs on them is are her favorite puzzles to do um we do have the peg i think they're called peg puzzles they just have the little peg that's on them um those are harder for her to do and the pieces on those aren't that thick or wide um so we're not there yet but so for now, we're doing the thicker piece puzzles, the wide pieces with the big knobs, if that makes sense. If you do, do puzzles, you know what I'm talking about. Um, we are doing puzzles. We are still working on colors. She can say all of the color names now. Um, it's just associating the word of the color, like red, to an object that is is the color red. Um, that is what we are working on right now. But otherwise, she can vocalize um, almost every single thing that we say, she at least attempts to say everything that we say, which is so completely awesome. Um, we taught her signs in the beginning, um, to help her communicate with us. And so if she does not know the verbal word for something, she still uses her signs, but otherwise we are, we're not moving away from signs, but because if she's across the room from me and I don't want to like like yell out something or if I'm on the phone I can just sign and she knows what I mean and she can like do it. Um, we are right now working on saying please and thank you um, when she asks for something to say please first and then after she gets it or if someone do, does something nice for her to say thank you. Um, so we're working on that. She says peas for peas, and she says that do for thank you. But um, again, it's it's a slow process. I'm just like so absolutely excited that she is um, trying to verbally communicate with us right now, and it's just awesome, like so awesome. Um, she knows um, 90 percent of her vis like the body parts that you can see. 90 percent she knows. Um, she knows head, hair, ears, um, forehead, eyes, cheeks, chin, mouth, teeth, tongue, nose, nostrils. Um, she knows neck, shoulders, elbow, arms, fingers, hand, palm, um, hips, um, tummy, belly button, back, booty. We say booty instead of butt. Um, knees. Um, ankles, feet, toes. Um, we are working on like calves and thighs. And what's oh eyebrows? We're working on. She doesn't. She doesn't know eyebrows yet. Um, she knows elbows. I don't know if I mentioned that one already. Um, but when she if she falls down and like let's say like she slides on her hand a little bit. Um, I say, what happened? Even if I've seen absolutely everything that happened, I ask her what happened. And she will point to whichever part of her hand hurts. Um, and one time, like, I did not see what happened, but the door of our gate closed and it happened to pinch her, like, middle finger that, 
like it sticks out farther than the other ones and it was just the tip and she goes ow and like started like crying and stuff well the top tip of her finger like was turned bright red and like it like looked like it hurt but I was like what happened and like she pointed to her finger that her finger hurt um so she's been doing a really really good job um she knows the word owie so if she has a scraped knee or something she will point to it and say owie um she she knows the word home where if we are out someplace and I say let's go home she knows that we are like getting ready to leave um and she just she's just doing awesome and we also do um the your baby can read um like learning system stuff and i just love that and i had and i did a review on this but i know i said that i had no expectations of her like learning how to read because i thought that it was like ridiculous myself but i did want um from what the samples and stuff that i saw I wanted um, a good educational like um, video for her to watch um, and it turns out she loves the videos they hold her attention the entire time like the entire time um, so in May at the beginning of May I got um, your child can read and I also got your child can discover so right now um, we've watched all of them she is not ready for the your child can read yet um, just it's it's she's just not ready for that yet but as soon as she is we'll start watching those and your child can discover is a little out of her um, like mental capacity right now but I'm pretty sure by fall um, she will be all ready for those videos so we have them um, we watched all of them she loved all of them but the information that is within them um, she's just she's not there yet and so we're going to continue with your baby can read um, she knows 17 17 words now when I did the review she knew about 15 or 16 words and I think she's learned two more since then. But I would recommend that to anybody who wants like good educational program that has like real life video and pictures, not like really bad characterizations of like animals and things like that. Um, but she's learned so much from those and I just, I am such a believer. And if you don't think that your kid will learn how to read, then just get it for the educational aspect of it. And the, the Your Baby Can Read isn't just for babies. Like, the, I've had friends' kids come over that are four and five and still enjoy those videos. So it's not something, and that's what I look for too, is something that can grow with our kids. And like, that it's an investment. It is an investment, but it is so worth it. Um, we are working on object identification and how things work and let's see covered body parts we're working on colors um we're working on letter sounds she knows all of the letter sounds and now she can say all of the letter names um and so we're putting the letter sounds and the letter names like together to so she is better able to speak and say words and everyone told me that i was crazy by teaching my six month old letter sounds and going ah at her and having her go ah back at me well I I 100% support like early learning because it has helped her like vocabulary so much um, she can say tons of things now and things that like she can say the word cracker like that is crazy um, it's just awesome and she can read words like I don't have to prompt her at all I can just show her the word and she will say or do what that word is um, but as for all of our toys she's just doing awesome um, I rotate out toys about once a month um, and I do like a specialty like I have a like a table it's like about a coffee table height and that I put different toys on and I like display those toys um, every month and then I like change those out and like right now on our table is puzzles and a new VTech learning toy that I got um, at a garage sale and just all that fun stuff. Um, 
potty training. <laughs> um, this is the last thing that I'm going to cover. Um, <coughs> excuse me. My allergies have been like really bad today and they've been pretty good for the last little bit. But today I have stuff and I've got drainage and a cough. So I apologize. Um, but anyways, potty training. So if you have followed me, you know that we started poop training early. <laughs> very early and everyone told me that I was crazy like I was crazy like oh your daughter is way too young to be potty training well yes and no but some people potty train their kids from the minute that they're born so by me starting when she's 12 months old like that like I don't know I don't think that I'm early and or late I think it depends on your child but I did want to do an update on our poop training slash potty training. So here is the deal. Okay, so we started off with poop training. And we were at about an 8 out of 10 um, consistency where she would go on the toilet. And if she did have to go um, poop, like number two or whatever, during nap time she would still go in her diaper if she wasn't like around and would go, I need to go potty. Well... Now, um, we have started pee training because when we were sitting on the toilet, she was also um, going pee. So we go, you go pee pee. And so over the last month, we have kind of switched from poop training to pee training. And so we go, when we wake her up in the morning, we take her and she goes. Um, we go before her morning nap. We go after her morning nap, we go before lunch, we go um, before her afternoon nap, after her afternoon nap, um, before, <laughs> before her evening nap, and after her evening nap, and then before we go to bed. So that is like eight, nine times that we are taking her to the bathroom during the day because she still doesn't have the bladder capacity to hold it for a, like, for a longer stretch of time. Plus, she's drinking more water and getting at least 24 ounces of the formula milk um, every day. So she um, she goes pee every I not every time, but 90% of the time that we take her to go pee, she will go. Um, her diapers are still wet, so she still is again like the bladder like fullness and um, control is not there yet. But every time that we take her most every time. I shouldn't say every time. Sorry. Her diaper is still wet and she does go most often when we do take her. So now she will tell me if she has to go pee pee. She'll stand at the bathroom door. Um, she will tell me that she has to go poo poos when she has to go pee pee, which we're trying to distinguish the two. Um, but it has turned into pee training and we are with the pee training, we are less successful with the poop training. So that is kind of a bummer, but it's okay. I do not have a problem with it at all. I am just super excited that how well she's doing with um, going pee pee on the potty and going poo poo on the potty. Um, right now with her poop, we are at about less than 50-50 with her going in her diaper as opposed to going on the toilet. Um, so that has dropped quite significantly because now five out of ten times she's going on the toilet instead of eight out of ten times so that's quite significant um, but she is going uh, pee pee on the toilet um, she comes with me when I go um, and so it's it's and it's not a stressful thing like I don't sit there and go you are gonna go pee pee and just sit there and like make her go we sit down if she does not go within the first like 30 seconds of sitting there and that's a long time but um, if she doesn't go she's not gonna go so we are working on wiping skills um, right now we're doing a pat pat and put it in the toilet that's what I tell her when for wiping and she gets two sheets of toilet paper she doesn't need any more than that um, but we do a, a two sheets of toilet paper, pat, pat, put in the toilet, and then she flushes, and she says bye bye to her pee-pee or her poo-poo. Um, but that is all I have. That's the stuff that I really, really quickly wanted to cover. It's kind of a sorry for a long, long update. But um, 
I wanted to t let everybody know um, how she's doing, how are things going. Um, I will try to post more videos um, of her doing different things um, to kind of show off a little bit. Um, I know that sounds bad, but there's family and friends that want to see what she is up to, and it's so easy to just put a video on YouTube and send them the link so that way they can view it. So, um, but yes, everything is going well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, and I'm so sorry this is so long, but I will talk to you guys later. Bye.